Hello, I'm Nicola from Stitches and Slapdashery and I'm in my rather messy sewing room again. It's a very foggy day. I can't even see the houses across the road today because we're really surrounded by fog. It's kind of cool. We're almost at the end of 2023. Where did the time go? So this is usually the time when we look back at the year just past and look forward to the next year. I just did a little segment of my works in progress. So I'll play that after this bit. So I thought I'd do a little look at my vlog and my blog and take a look at what I have actually achieved in yarn and fabric this year because there's been quite a bit. A few years ago, I was doing mostly yarn crafts and I was probably logging 60 to 80 projects a year on Ravelry. It's nowhere near that now. But then I have been sewing more and doing other stuff. So it's not for me about the numbers anymore. I used to think, hey, that's so many projects made, which is awesome. But if anything, I'd say 2023 has been the year of the garment. I have made more sweaters, t-shirts, tank tops, pants, you name it, than ever before. I really got into the garment sewing and I decided that as I had made so many accessories in the past, and I was awash with accessories, that it was time I started making larger items. And rather than make a whole bunch more blankets, because I already have a lot of those, decided it was going to be sweaters and things like that. So I think I achieved my goal. There's been a few things happening this year, a few things that stand out for me without trolling back through my kitchen diary, which is my paper one. You know, I'm still a bit of a Luddite as far as that's concerned. I love to have my paper diary and I usually go at the end of every year and I buy them when they're at least 50% off because, you know, most people have bought their diaries for the following year by then. So they're on sale. I still haven't bought the one for 2024. So I haven't been through that yet. But one of my favorite things to do at the beginning of January is to get the old diary and the new diary side by side. And I copy down everything into the new diary. So all the birthdays get transferred, any other important dates. And it's a way of looking back and saying, oh, this is what I was doing then. And it might just be something really trivial, but it's still nice to look back at it. So I haven't had the chance to do that yet. That's, as I say, haven't bought my diary yet. So I'm just going here by what I can remember that really stands out for me. There's really only a few things. In March, I had a trip back to the island of Jersey to see my family. My mum turned 90. And last year, we really had our doubts as to whether she would survive that long because she was very, very sick. Um, she was in hospital for a few weeks, maybe up to 10 weeks. I can't remember exactly. And then she went to live in a care home. And so we busted her out of the care home for the day, we invited a lot of friends. She wasn't expecting that. She was expecting something a lot smaller. And we had a party. We had an amazing cake. Like she and my dad always used to play Scrabble together when he was still alive. And the cake was just this amazing creation by this lady who does all these amazing cakes in Jersey. And it looked like a Scrabble board and it had a pair of glasses and it had a little notepad and pencil and it had a squirrel because we always think of my dad when we see squirrels because he was absolutely crazy about feeding the squirrels when he was alive. And we had a good time. So I was there for a week. I went on my own and uh, that was a lot of fun. And then what was the next thing I thought about? Well, of course, 
I, la I launched my YouTube channel in June. That was a big thing. I always find I get really stressed out about things and sort of overthink things ahead of time and almost stops me doing stuff. I bet no one else has that problem, right? Anyway, I did finally do it in June. And I'm really glad I did. It's been an amazing six months and I've really enjoyed it. The next big thing was I quit my job in August of nine years and buzzed all my hair off. It still hasn't all grown back as long as I want it to. <laughs> I cut it down to like three millimeters and then when it had grown out a couple of mils, I put the color back in it. and. Um, yeah, I have had it trimmed on the back and sides once since then, but I'm still waiting for the top to get a little bit longer because the curl still hasn't come back yet. And it's been four months. So, yeah, I guess it'll get there eventually. It's probably due for a dose of color again, but I just haven't felt like it lately. And then my niece had a baby in November. Of course, that was a big spur for me to sew and crochet and knit things. Babies are always a good excuse for making things, right? Always. And so I ended up sending her a box full of stuff and she really loved it all. And I have since sent another baby hoodie with the official baby welcoming card once the little boy was born. Um, she hasn't mentioned that she's received it yet, which is not good because I sent it air this time and she should have had it. But of course, Christmas mail, Christmas mail. And then, of course, the final, the final big news in my life of the year was, of course, my husband's throat cancer diagnosis, which was only just before Christmas, really. So that's a big thing not related to uh, creating things, not relating to my sewing, knitting and crochet, but definitely relating to my mental state. And uh, that's something obviously that we're going to be focusing on 2024, is making sure he gets healthy again. So I took a look through my blog and vlog. My blog is nicolanitz.com. So if you want to see anything I made, before I started vlogging in June, and you can go to nicolanets.com and have a look at what I wrote about before. It's kind of nice to be able to look back on some of them sometimes. And I also looked through my Ravelry project page. I'm Nicola Nitz on Ravelry, and there, there aren't that many. I think there were like 22 project pages for this year, which is probably about 27 actual things because the dishcloths were multiples. And I had a quick look through my channel overview to see what, um, what I had been talking about. So in sewing, baby clothes definitely took a big chunk of my time. I made some hoodies and sweaters. I made some lovely, fluffy, chunky sweaters, which I have been using this, this uh, winter. I've really been enjoying, especially the granny square one, like the granny square print fleece has been so fun to wear. I've had so many compliments on it. The big chunky fleecy ones, not worn them so much. It has to be a pretty cold day for me to want to put them on, but they just feel like wearing a blanket. They're just lovely. Made a lot of project bags, a coat this year. That was a bit out of my comfort zone. Came out okay. I made some quilts. I made quite a few zipper pouches, as always, because that's one of my favorite things to make. I made some harem pants and some overalls. I made lots of tank tops and t-shirts. This was the year when I got a lot more comfortable with sewing knits. In knitting stories, oh, I designed and made my own machine knitted cardigan. I have a basic bond, you know, like an ultimate sweater machine. I don't even know if they were called that. It was older than that. When I was, when I was about 18, I spent, I think it was 60 pounds on a bond knitting machine. 
And that was a heck of a lot of money in those days. It was probably equivalent to like 10 times that now. And I made a couple of things with it, never really got on with it. Ended up leaving it behind in the flat when I left my boyfriend. It was like, pack up my clothes and stuff, leave, left it behind. Why did I do that? At the very least, I could have sold it, got some money back for it. Don't know why I did that. And so many, many years later, after we moved to Canada, I decided I wanted to get one again. And I had a look on the local classifieds. I can't remember what. And someone who lives literally a couple of minutes down the road from me was selling one as new. So I bought it. I can't remember how much I paid them for it. And it was perfectly good. All the pieces were there. And so I've dabbled with it a few times over the years. There was one year when I decided to have a massive stash down of my yarn and I made tons of scarves and I used up just about all my yarn on scarves and I donated them to, uh, oh, where was it? It may have been the local food bank. I'm not sure. And so that was good. And then this year I decided I wanted to make a long cardigan with some neon in it. So I made a long gray cardigan with neon stripes on the sleeves and towards the bottom of the body. The only thing I would say I wasn't happy with on that, where the body meets the sleeves, it was kind of lumpy around the armhole. And so even though the cardigan sort of worked out how I wanted it to. I've not really worn it. Not out of the house anyway. So I've made a few things. I mean, the the pom-pom beanie that I just finished with the matching cowl, the fingerless mitts, the cabled ones that I made in December, and the hoodie, the second Sporto hoodie which I made with Escapius Truly Scrumptious. And I love the result now. But it took me so long to finish it because I was agonizing over the color decisions. Got there in the end. So a small, um, a small number of knitting projects, mixed results. And then crochet, I have crocheted more things than I have knitted. So the highlights on the crochet would be, well, I've made some amigurumi and some dishcloths. I made the Elevation cardigan from Jess at Make and Do Crew. And that was the one in the shades of brown and oranges that I made that I wouldn't probably have shown on the vlog because it was finished before I started vlogging. Again, you could go see that on my Ravelry project page. That's the one I recently gave away to a friend. Oh, the any, any Yarn Will Do Cardigan and Sweater. Well, this is the Any Yarn Will Do Cardigan, which has been one of my favorite things to wear since I made it. I have to say I've loved it. The sweater I made in a cotton yarn with short sleeves, and so it's definitely more of a summery thing. I don't like it as much as this. This definitely, I love it. Nice, chunky, Wendy Husky called and oh, just my favorite thing. So I made a lot of baby items and I made a few scarves, shawls and beanies in crochet as one does. So I totaled about 27 yarn items in 2023, about 100 sewn items. And as far as I know, I remember to put them all on either the blog or the vlog or my Ravelry project page or even all three. So it's been a good year for crafting. And I've really enjoyed sharing that crafting journey with you the last six months. So that's been awesome. I have not written down any notes of what I plan to do in 2024. There's a thread on the Ravelry forums that says crafting goals for 2024. And I have not participated because I don't really like to make a lot of plans. I'm the sort of person who can make plans. I love to-do lists and I love crossing things off to-do lists, but then it kind of feels like an obligation and I want my crafting to be fun. There is one thing I want to sew 
And my poor sewing machine has probably been wondering what the heck's happened to me in the last week because once I got all the Christmas bits and pieces made and started giving them out to the people I intended to give them to, there wasn't really any need for me to get back to the sewing machine because I had my Christmas sewing done and I didn't have anything I needed to do. So poor old machine over there is feeling a little neglected. However, I have seen a really nice sling bag pattern. It's by Yoan Sewing Studio called the Serene Sling Bag, I think, or Crossbody. No, it's a sling bag. She has a couple of sling bags on her channel. There was one from about 10 months ago that was very, very similar. I can't remember what she called it, but it had a Matryoshka doll, Matryoshka doll fabric print on the front of it. So if you're looking through her videos, you'll see it. And that is a bit smaller than the more recent one. The Serene is a tiny bit bigger. It's a bit deeper, a bit wider. There's two options. And it has either a slip pocket with a snap, I think, or a double zipper on the front. So you can either use the free version, which is the snap pocket, or you can pay for a, a premium pattern, get the zipper instructions. The video covers both. And I'll just make the basic one. So I've got a couple of options for fabrics for that. I just need to check whether I have the right sort of zipper for it. I know I don't have any zippers which have like two zippers and open outwards, like a purse zipper. So I may, may invest in one because it would be really lovely to have a zipper that opens from the center and you can open it both ways. It doesn't have to. It's not like it's not usable with just a one way zipper. But I might get one anyway. And that will be my everyday bag, I think. Obviously, what I would like to do is in crochet, I would like to finish my two projects that are outstanding, which is the shawl and all those granny squares that I was going to make granny pants out of, but I'm not sure I'm going to do that now. You'll see in the next bit of film. And for knitting, no idea. Uh, I don't think there's anything I really need to make out of that's knitted, but I do like to have a knitting project on the go as well. Just mixes it up, uses different muscles, gives you a break from a project that's, you know, giving you problems. And then of course, I want to carry on working on my cross stitch. One thing I did think about. You know temperature blankets, right? Have you ever made a temperature project? I made a temperature scarf back in 2013, and it was just a garter stitch scarf, and I picked out all the colors that would relate to different temperatures. So I used a different color for each five-degree increment of daytime high. <clears throat> so I made a plan at the beginning of the year, and then I would do one garter ridge or two rows for every day, depending on the daytime high. And I finished it, and it was about 12 feet long. <laughs> the thing with temperature projects is you really need to think about how big they're going to be when you've, uh, when you've finished them. So one of the things I thought I would do is a... Um, don't want to call it a cancer project. I'll call it something else. But I was wondering that whether on January the 9th, when my husband starts his first treatment, uh, which will probably be going on for at least seven weeks, I was thinking how would it be to have a project which I could add to each day during his treatment. But what I will have to do is I'll have to figure out what I want the ultimate thing to be, how I'm going to decide which color to use in it, um, whether it will be crochet or knitting, or whether it will be one square a day, or one row a day. But I just thought it would be nice to have something 
that would mark that time. Give me something to focus on that's creative. Anyway, obviously I need a lot more thought on that. One of the things I did in 2014 was I did a farmers and crafters market for the summer. I had a small booth in a small market in a very hot parking lot with not very many customers. There was not a lot of passing traffic. And that was a shame. It, it sort of dampened my enthusiasm. I certainly did not make any money that summer. In fact, my most successful day would have been when I put out a sign and I said that my proceeds were going to an animal charity. And then that drew people in because they obviously could see that there was some reason for them to buy my stuff rather than just giving me money. They were helping animals. This year, I'd like to do a different market and I'd like to actually plan to be there every single Sunday from whatever it is, May to September. And that means a lot of planning. I'm going to have to think about business cards and labels. There's loads of places to get labels for your products. You know, just the little sew-in tags that maybe just have my name on, maybe a care code or something like that. So there's hand wash, whatever. There's loads of places you can get them on Etsy or you can make them yourself when you print them out onto things like that um, iron-on transfer sheet. And printing business cards is easy. I just have to figure out um, a definitive plan for a logo. When I was setting up this channel, I played around in Canva and I got some rather fun designs sorted out. And I did pick on something that I liked. I liked the sort of the gradient, either the turquoise or the pink. I liked the little mannequin and a certain kind of font which says my name with the flowers on it, which you probably don't even see most of the time. If you're clicking straight through to the videos, you'd have to go to my homepage to actually see that. But I'm thinking that, you know, after six months of, of using that, I need to figure out whether I want to stick with that or try something a bit new and then try and have a cohesive look across the channel. Also, the blog would be nice the labels and business cards. And then I have to knuckle down and start sewing for that. What I want to do when it comes to products is I want to have a plan so that I'm not just making a bunch of random stuff. I mean, I do love making different things, but it's not efficient. And if I'm going to make a bunch of things to sell, I should be able to streamline the process somewhat. Say I make zipper pouches. I should be I maybe have a couple of different sizes that I've got pre-planned so I'm not always faffing about figuring out what size I need to cut. <clears throat> and maybe a couple of different pattern of fabric designs. So I want I want it all to look lovely and springy and fresh and exciting and colorful. Right, especially in the spring. Maybe I can change it, change it as it goes later in the summer. Maybe, you know, a couple of zipper pouches, maybe a drawstring bag that you can put your knitting project in, and maybe something else, some sort of other organizer pouch. And have that as my line of things so that I'm not always trying to reinvent the wheel every week. And then if something sells well, I can easily make more. That doesn't mean to say that I can't make other things. It's just there may be some one-offs, but if I have a consistent line, I think that would be a good idea. And then obviously if you're attending the same market every week and it's 20 weeks, then after maybe halfway through maybe bring out some new fabrics, make it more summery. And then as the fall approaches, make it more fall themed. So maybe about three different 
color schemes throughout the year, but a fairly limited range of products and reasonable prices. You know, I don't want to make a fortune on this, but obviously I do want to make profit. This brings me to another thing I want to mention that I haven't mentioned before because I wanted to keep it very low key. But I have a Kofi account and I had it for six months before I even put the link on my homepage here on YouTube. And I certainly didn't have any expectations that anyone would want to buy me a coffee. You know, it's a little little button. Oh, I don't know how it works. You click the link. I guess you go to my Kofi page. You, you click tip and you can tip me five bucks to buy a cup of coffee. And yeah, I didn't really expect anything. And then on Christmas Day, I had a lovely lady send me my first donation. And I was absolutely over the moon about it. I just thought, oh, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> you know who you are. So I added a little bit extra to the Kofi page. It's not a big priority really um, and I certainly don't expect any of you to to go and donate if you don't want to I'm quite happy to carry on vlogging for free with no no demands on your finances but Kofi does offer a shop option and it seems to be a good option in that they don't charge you anything for listing things and there's just a small percentage that I will pay if something sells. And I thought, well, that would be a nice little way, a little add on to the channel. Say, for example, I'm, I've made something like the pom pom beanie, for example, and it's not for me and it's not specifically for anyone else. I could put it on my Kofi shop. Again, that's just going to be a little side benefit of the channel and certainly not the main thrust of this channel. I just enjoy the sharing part and the, and the feedback. Like, it's amazing to me that anyone <laughs> is happy to sit through my videos and enjoy listening to me <laughs> and taking their precious time to watch my videos. I'm just so pleased about that. And, and getting, getting the, the likes and comments is awesome, especially the comments, of course. And I, at the moment, of course, my channel's pretty small and it's small enough that I see every comment that comes in and I can reply to everyone because there, there aren't hundreds of them, which is, is nice in a way. It's more personal, isn't it? It looks like I've been yakking on for over half an hour now. So I'll probably wind it up here. I've got that little segment of film to show you after this, which I'll add on because it's just uh, showing you the current state of the works in progress. So I'll just say thank you very much for your support in 2023. Thanks to all of you who liked, subscribed and commented. And I look forward to making lots more videos in 2024 and watching my little channel grow a little bit more maybe. Have a very happy new year, a happy healthy new year even. And I'll talk to you again next year. We are coming to the end of 2023 and it's time for a review of the whips, the FOs, and all the other activities that happened in 2023. So let's just go over what I have outstanding right now that I haven't already shown you or that I've shown you, but not in the current state. So my seahorse, that's right. <laughs> oh dear, the brain. The seahorse is a little further on from the last time you saw it. Put a little bit of purple down here and added some extra blues in here. This is obviously going to take me a long time and there's no deadline for it. I have lots of 
embroidery flosses so i'm not going to run out of those it's not really a portable project so it's just going to be sitting near me in the living room and i will pick it up as and when i feel the urge but i do find that cross stitching very relaxing you'll have already seen the Zahira beanie, maybe not with the pom-pom. I think I may have added the pom-pom on after I showed it to you. Really happy with this. Came out really pretty. So what I then did is I made a cowl. To go with it. So the cowl has exact same ribbing, but with a bigger needle. This used a size 4 us and then a size 8 us i think i used a size 6 us for this ribbing and size 8. so the ribbing's a little looser but the same amount of stitches because it's a cowl to go around your neck and it obviously doesn't need to be as snug as that and then i did the three cable crossings the same as this and instead of doing a crown i did another stretch of ribbing i did do a knit one pearl one ribbing keep it loose but I find it looks a little messy but I haven't washed this yet so what I'm probably will do is I will wash the hat and the cowl without the pom-pom of course and just put it aside as a gift for somebody sometime no specific plans for that as I said before not my color but I am pleased with how they look So that's that project bag all finished with. And then this project bag has the festoon shawl in it. I am 29 rows in out of 60. And at the moment I have about 300 stitches. And eventually there will be 497. Ugh. So much, to, so much to go, so much, so much yet to do on this. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. This is my contrast for the little popcorns, but most of it is made in this one. Morocco Comfort Sock in the colour 17172, which I think is called denim. If you look on Ravelry, I'm pretty sure it's called denim. So this is what the first part looks like. Whoops, it's getting caught up on my cross-stitching needle. <laughs> Not good. Ah. The crocheting is pretty fine. It's a sock weight yarn. It's fiddly. It's an extended single crochet, which means that you're constantly getting hung up on that first pull through. If it was just single crochet, it would be so much more straightforward. But hey, I have actually been adding to it in the last few days. So it's not completely hibernating. It just isn't my priority right now. Again, it'll be sitting up in the living room next, next to where I sit on my couch. Ready to pick up when I feel like working on it. I've widened the view for this because it's a rather large project. These are the colours that I was going to use for any extra work on this. A 
Okay, so this um, rather wacky looking thing <laughs> is going to be the granny square pants, but I'm having second thoughts about this. So I have way more DK yarn than this, but I kept the ones that were ones that I liked better aside for a future project. So as you can see, yeah, you can see, <laughs> this is a very lumpy project. I knew that by being lazy and using a couple of strands of DK together and not changing my color every round, like a classic granny square, I knew they were going to be pretty darned ugly. <laughs> and they are. They're thick. And when I sewed them together, it just looked insanely lumpy. And because of the size of them, what size is this across? They're about seven inches across. So, apologies if I keep knocking the camera. Um, it was hard to customize the size to actually fit well. I did start crocheting a waistband, but I think this is going to come off because this is far too deep. Like for from here to here is already too deep for my waist waist to crotch measurement, and adding a waistband is going to make it even worse. And this measurement is a bit too short for my leg. So I think I'm going to have to take them apart. That's not going to be fun. Although, I mean, if I, okay, like there, I use a red thread for a red yarn, sewing them together. So it'll be easy to find the strand to snip. But I think this might end up just being a blanket. And I might go ahead and make some granny square pants, which I still would like. Either I will pick out some different yarn, maybe in, even invest in some new yarn that's worsted weight. You know what? I've got quite a lot of worsted weight yarn already. I should probably just use that, at least to start with. Or I did consider getting that granny square printed fleece and making myself some pajama pants with that. Let me just go and see how much I have of that. This is the granny square fleece that I used to make a sweater for myself and my friend. But it's mostly small pieces. The biggest stretch of fabric I think I have of this is maybe a meter, and I probably need at least two to two and a half meters for a pair of pajama pants for myself. So that may not happen. Although there is a Boxing Day sale on at the fabric store right now, so you know, you never know. So those are my whips the cross stitch. The festoon shawl and this, whatever this is, and whatever it's going to be 